On a scale of one to 10, how confident are you? Go ahead, don't be shy. Put up your hands, who's a 10? All right, you, stand up, get out of here. I'm just kidding. So I was homesick recently from work, unfortunate, I know, and I did what every reasonable person that stays home from work does. I watched daytime television. And Steve Harvey was on, Family Feud, and he was going through Fast Money with the family. And he said, we surveyed 100 different people and we asked them, on a scale of one to 10, how confident are you? The family answered, four and eight. The number one answer being, of course, seven. Wait a minute. Seven, that's odd. Well, yes, the number seven is odd, of course, but why not one? Why not 10? Six is a perfectly good number. So I thought, okay, well, what, what exactly does confidence mean? <clears throat> so I decided to call a friend. I called my friend Siri, and I said, hey, Siri, how confident are you? <laughs> she replied back in her smart-ass way, who, me? Well, Siri, what is the definition of confidence? Confidence, the feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something. Firm trust. All right, well, how does that apply to what we've been talking about? Does someone with 10 out of 10 confidence, do they always succeed, they never fail, they never procrastinate, and they can always trust themselves? I don't believe that. I think I have 10 out of 10 confidence, and the other day I decided to watch Netflix instead of do my house chores. So on the flip side then, what does that mean for people that have low confidence? Does that mean they always fail, they never succeed, and they don't trust in themselves? Well, I don't think that's true. So there's a lot of other ways that I think we can talk about confidence. And since I'm an engineer, uh, the next 14 pictures are going to be talking about statistic confidence. I'm just kidding, there's actually only two slides. So um, <clears throat> statistical confidence is the idea that with a certain level of confidence, I can say that data points will fall within a range, say 1 to 10. And it's represented by the symbol sigma. Now, how the math works out, I don't want to bore you for the people that really don't like statistics, is that a six sigma essentially means that you are 999,999 out of a million confident. That being said, you still can't be 100%. So where do we go from here? So like everything that is complicated and mathy, the sigma symbol comes from the Greeks. And the Greeks always decided to think about things logically, go into philosophy, and then eventually math was derived from all those different things. So I've been studying philosophy casually for the last 10 years. Uh, the very first book I ever picked up was Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. And I've been trying to answer life's hard questions like, why does Netflix cost $9.99 a month? <clears throat> so there's actually a quote from Marcus Aurelius that I'd like to give you today. You have power over your own mind, but not outside events. When you realize that, you will find strength. So some of the other philosophers that I've studied are Socrates and Plato. Now, Socrates was kind of, excuse my French, a shit disturber. He didn't like democracy, and in fact, he really didn't like a lot of things. We don't have any writings from Socrates because everything was written by his pupil, Plato, in dialogues. Now, the thing about Socrates is that the reason he hated democracy is that he thought confidence was needed to make decisions. And he didn't think that people following each other met blindly made sense. So he always thought, get rid of lazy assumptions and let's talk about confidence in the, in the base, uh, base ideas. So he came up with a method. He said, let's take a common idea, say a, a, a common sense idea like people that get paid a lot of money are happy at their jobs or people that are married are happy. And then he said, take that common sense idea and find an exception to it, like somebody that's unhappy in their marriage or someone that actually hates their job. And then you had to refine it and go a little bit more in depth with it. So he decided, okay, let's go and let's find it more precise. So perhaps somebody that is married to the right person lives a happy life, or perhaps somebody that has a fulfilling job and gets paid a lot of money is a hap has a happy life. And eventually would continue to do this iteration over and over and over again until eventually you felt like you had enough confidence in your argument, your idea, the way you're acting and your behaviors. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it didn't work out for Socrates. This is a picture of him drinking hemlock because uh, they didn't think that he was a very good person. But that's for a different time. So what can we, what we, can, what can we, can take, what can we take away from Socrates' ideas of confidence and empower ourselves with that for our own lives? The thing about, uh, the thing about Socrates' ideas is that <clears throat> When you really apply it, you can realize that there's a lot of different ways we can go in our lives. And I'm going to use an example in mind that is maybe a little bit heavy, but 
it, it, I think it gets the point across. So about six years ago in my life, I decided to cut out somebody in my life that had a lot of addictions and was very abusive. Had been in my life for several decades. And at that time, I thought, you know, this is it. I, you know, my life's not going to get any better. This is, I've tried everything. Nothing's going to go different. And I realized that there was actually an exception to that, the exception being that I hadn't thought of going an opposite way, of not having that person in my life anymore. And with the help of some of the other family members that I had, I made the decision to cut that person out. And I realized how much confidence that brought me towards my daily life and realizing there was a lot of different opportunities in life. Once you actually step back, took the emotions out of it, and applied logic and a different method of confidence. So it really helped me break free. And <clears throat> when I've been talking to a couple of friends about this idea lately, and a few of them are in sales, and they think, you know, Chris, I've been trying to, I've been trying to, you know, get customers to purchase different things, or and, and just as I don't seem to be able to have enough confidence to get to the next step. And so I asked them. I said, Well, have you been actually asking them to? Have you been actually asking them to add these things to your sales, or have you had a performance review lately? And they said, Well, yeah. And I said, Did you ask for a raise? Well, no, that's crazy. Well, if you asked for a raise, do you think you might have got one? Well, maybe. I might have got a raise. Okay, well, maybe next time you should just try asking the question and see what the opposite side is. So <clears throat> I'd like to leave you with one last uh, quote from Marcus Aurelius, and it's a fairly simple one. A happy life is fairly easy to reach. <clears throat> it takes very little. It is all within yourself and in your way of thinking. So I'm going to re-ask the question now. On a scale of 1 to 10, how confident are you? Thank you.